we have here a concrete slab and which is supported by these beams and these beams will transfer the load to the columns the task is we need to calculate the the axial load on all of these nine columns now first of all we need to understand that the this concrete slab is supported by these beams and the load will be transferred like so half of the load will go to this beam and the other half will go to this beam and half of the load will go to this beam and the other half will go to this beam and then the load will be carried to these columns so that would be the the path for loads so based on on these will start a calculation and the calculation always starts in the short direction so what we do is we take a strip in the short direction and this is this side is the short direction and this side is the long direction so we take a strip in the short direction first and that strip will be of a width of one one foot like so and this one foot strip of concrete slab we take a section here and this concrete slab uh, it should look like so it will be this will be the concrete slab you'll have a beam here and then a beam here and a beam here That will be the section for this red strip. And the idea from this strip is it represents the bays. These two bays that we have here it represents this bay and this bay, both bays. So that means I can do this. I will say this represents both bays. This one and this one. So now the other thing is as we have a uniform distributed load which is 68 pound per square foot that is dead load and live load whatever so it is the uh, the uniform distributed load so we say we'll take a strip in the short direction and once we take a strip in the short direction what we'll do is we'll, we'll break this down into into the following beams there'll be one beam here and and this beam will have a reaction in this direction this direction and of course this direction so I'd like to see how this beam uh, is analyzed this beam will carry uniform load and the uniform load if you look at the uniform load here it reads 68 pound per square foot so this strip is being one foot this is only one foot so meaning if I will get this each foot is 68 68 68 68 68 so if I come to a one square foot here is only 68 pounds and because we are taking only one strip here for the analysis here to this part so I can say that this is a uniform load, uniform distributed load sitting on this beam and on this beam and the value of this is 68 pound per foot. So what I will do is I'll calculate the reactions. I'll calculate the reaction here which is RG1 and the reaction here is RD1. I'll call it and this is RD2 and this is RA1. So the value I get on for RG1 will be recorded will be the load sitting on this beam and the combination of these two will be the load sitting on this beam and reaction R A1 will be sitting on this beam and once I calculate the load sitting on each beam then I will isolate these beams like A B B C and calculate them calculate their reaction which will be sitting on each column that will be the axial load for uh, for this case 
So let's move on to do the calculation. So keep in mind we are doing the short direction. So let's go and do the, the calculation. So we, we separated these beams. So it is uh, RA1, RD1, RD2. And uh, the calculation is straightforward here is is R A one is equal to R D one because this is here from distribution law so and it's equal to W L divided by two. And of course this is the W here from distribution load. So straightforward we have sixty eight pound per foot multiplied by ten feet and divide by two is equal to so R R A one is equal to R D one and it is equal to three hundred forty pounds. Of course, you will cancel this out. Foot and foot will be cancelled out. We'll be left with with pounds. And same thing goes to this side. So R D two is equal to R G one is equal to W L divided by two. And again, the omega or W is equal to 68 pound per foot multiplied by 8 feet and divide by 2. So R D2 is equal to R G1 and is equal to 272 pounds. Again, there's a cancellation of foot and foot. So I'll be left with with pounds. So now, now we said the RA1 will be sitting on the beam AB and RG1 will be sitting on beam GH, but the D will be the combination of these two. So I need to add these two to get the load sitting on beam DE. So let's do the calculation for that part. So RD is equal to RD1 plus RD2 and is equal to. So RD1 is equal to, so let's just highlight these ones, these values, is equal to 340 pounds plus 272 pounds and the answer for this is 612 pounds. So these are the, the loads. So if I go and update my sketch now, So this will be this will be is equal, this value is two hundred seventy two pounds and this value is six hundred twelve pounds and this value is equal to three hundred forty pounds. Now the next step is I need to calculate now I'll take isolate this beam these beams and calculate the reactions on them and the reactions on these beams will be the axial load sitting on the columns which is the answer for this question. So let's do that part. So we'll take beam A B. So if you look at beam A B in this case, so what happens here is A B will be this will be A B. And the reaction here will be the axial load for these columns. Let me just move this a bit. So the load sitting here is, if I project this load here, so that means that on this one foot, I have 340. 340 pounds. But this strip is the same throughout the entire width here, so it means 340 pounds for each foot. So it will be fair to make this, this is 340, 340, 340, and continues like that 
on all sides, so I can call this nearly 40 pound per foot length. And of course, same thing goes for this one, because this is same as the previous one. So let's do the calculation based on this concept. So here's the longitudinal, the long direction. So for the long direction beams, so the again this is R A three is equal to R B three because the uniform distribution load is equal to W L divided by two and the W which is three hundred forty, which is or the omega is W three hundred forty. So three hundred forty pound per foot and the length is span is 16 feet and again divide by 2 is equal to so now RA3 is equal to RB3 is equal to let's do the numbers here that's 2720 pounds same thing goes here, so RB4 is equal to RC3 is equal to omega or W divided by 2 and is equal to, this is being same thing, the omega is equal to 340 pound per foot, so 340 pound per foot multiplied by 12 feet divided by 2 so R B four is equal to R C three and is equal to two thousand forty pounds. So these are the values I have calculated so far. So we'll continue with the same way we did with the previous one because we said now the reaction R A three is is the load sitting on column A. That is the axial load for that one. And the reaction RC3 is is the axial load sitting on column C. But for the interior column will be the combination of RB3 and RB4. So we need to add these two up. So RB is equal to RB3 plus RB4 is equal so um, RB3 is 200 uh, there's a zero I'm missing here to 27 20 pounds plus 20 40 pounds is equal to so the answer for this is equal to 400 seven six zero pounds that is the axial load sitting on B so now we managed to get the load on three columns, column A, column B, column C. So you can say that this is, this is column A. And this is for column C. And this is for column B. Okay, so now we move to the interior beams. So let's go to the interior beams. And for the interior beams, the only thing that is different is this omega. And same thing, this is also W is equal to 612 pound per foot. Calculation will be this very similar, except you change the omega value here. So uh, RD3 is equal to RE3 is equal to omega L divided by 2. Now omega is 612 pound per foot multiplied by 16 feet divided by 2 is equal to Uh, 
I have 4,896 pounds. Same goes here. RE4 is equal to R F3 is equal to omega L divided by 2 or W L divided by 2. And 612 pound per foot divided by 12 feet divided by 2 is equal to uh, 3,672 pounds. So these are the two values that we got so far. And uh, so the RD3 will be the axial load, the reaction RD3 will be the axial load on column D. And the RF3 reaction is the axial load thing on column F. But for column uh, E, it ha has to be the combination of these two. So we need to add these two and see what the value is for that axial load. So RE is equal to RE3 plus RE4 is equal to 4896 pounds plus 3672 pounds is equal to so the total will be is equal to 85,000 pounds 8,000 that will be the axial load sitting on column E we'll do the same thing you see this is a very uh, uh, repeating the exact same thing so we'll move to the to the edge column columns which is uh, G and H and uh, I, same story repeats here. So we have RG3 is equal to RH3 is equal to WL divided by 2 is equal to, see the only difference is the W or omega, 272 pounds per foot, multiplied by 16 feet. And divide by 2 is equal to so R G3 is equal to R H3 and is equal to 2172 pounds. Same goes for this guy, so R H4 is equal to R I3 is equal to WL divided by 2. And this is again the omega or W is equal to 272 pound per foot. 272 pound per foot multiplied by 12 feet divided by 2. So R H4 is equal to R I3 is equal to 1632. 1632 pounds. So again, these are the loads sitting on the reaction RG3 will be the, the load on column G and the reaction RI3 is will be the axial load sitting on column I. But we said for for column H will be both of these two. So I need to add these two up. So so we have uh, now to so R H three is equal sorry R H is equal to R H three plus R H four is equal to 2172 pounds plus 1632 pounds and is equal to 3808 pounds that will be the axial load sitting on column H that's it